俺の魂に触れるか福間水ずし乗るよ分をわきまえろ知れ者が女も子供も宇治のように湧いている素晴らしい大札だ These are just a few claims Sukuna declares in Jujutsu Kaisen as king. Not the king of curses, the king of everything. His dominion is the planet itself. Everyone that resides within it should bow down to him due to his superior understanding of true Jujutsu and overwhelming power. Sukuna, just like Satoru freaking Gojo, is enlightened. However, unlike Gojo, Sukuna follows a ideology of individualism rather than collectivism. Those that have the notification bell on would have seen our last video which discusses their inevitable battle that would dominate the Jujutsu world. It will be the end of the manga itself, a climatic battle between good and evil. This video is a further expansion upon that, giving even more clues as to why this is going to happen, including Sukuna's entire story that you didn't know. Because, you know, we like to go balls deep. For example, we cannot forget that Sukuna mentioned in the first few chapters that once he takes over Itadori's body for himself, he promises to kill and fight Satoru Gojo first. But obviously, this begs the question, why did Sukuna become evil? How did Sukuna become the king? Why did he become king? How does he have four arms and eyes? The list of questions goes on and on. And don't worry, we will be answering all of them by the end of this video if you watch it entirely. So let's get started. Welcome back everyone and it's time to go Balls D. And when I mean Balls D, I mean talking about the lore, history and real life concepts the author of Jujutsu Kaisen used to create Sukuna's character. This is research that we have conducted for everyone because you know, let's be honest, you know what I'm saying. You guys don't want to read in 2022 who reads history and stuff and you know you'll subscribe to Anime Balls D. You know Adil and Harrison and Yusuf, they're just gonna read all that shit for me and answer all the big questions. And yes, you got that right. We do and we have. We got you, don't worry. But in return, can you destroy that like button so we know that you want more JJK content on our channel? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so right off the bat, let's start with what makes Sukuna the king of curses. And respected by special grade curses like Jogo, feared by Jujutsu sorcerers and curse users. Even in the recent chapters such as 185, we know characters such as Hajime Kashimo are seeking out Sukuna because the story has to come full circle to his legend that shaped the Jujutsu world. Sukuna is 1000 years old, but even sorcerers from 400 years Years ago seek him out to understand the mystery for themselves and want to meet the king, desiring a real challenge. The law we were given in chapter 3 describes Sukuna's clash with Jujutsu sorcerers 1000 years ago in the golden age. So of course you're wondering what could we possibly talk about to expand upon his title of king. Ryumen Sukuna, otherwise known as the two-faced spectre in Japanese mythology, is one of the most mysterious mysterious mythological deities described in the Nihon Shoki Chronicles of Japan. The Nihon Shoki is a Japanese history book created during the Nara period of Japan and it's also the oldest existing history book in Japan. This text is where the oldest information of Sukuna exists and is the book that Gege Akutami used for inspiration to create his character. In the official Jujutsu Kaisen fan book, Gege Akutami mentioned that Sukuna resembles and is powerful like the Sukuna from the Japanese law. The evidence for this can be specifically seen in Sukuna's design from chapter 117. The Sukuna of Jujutsu Kaisen holds many similarities to the 
ancient statues created for the mythological version. Take a look. Look at that shit. Yeah. I'm not kidding. So back to the Nihon Shoki. It is said that Sukuna was quick witted and had super strength, which is just like our Sukuna in Jujutsu Kaisen. Not only that, it is also stated that he was the head of the Hida province during the reign of Emperor Nintoku until the year 377. Sukuna of ancient Japan lost his reign when the emperor sent his greatest general to expel him from the land. Hmm, this sounds awfully familiar, doesn't it? Yes. That's because it is. The ancient sorcerers in Jujutsu Kaisen's story had to bind together to defeat Sukuna. But we can also say that this great general shogun that was sent can be represented in Jujutsu Kaisen's story by Satoru Gojo, as he is the greatest sorcerer in history, and both of them are seen as natural calamities that are destined to face each other. According to Gege Akatami, the creator of the series, in an interview, it's confirmed that Gojo is the pinnacle of power and its ceiling. Gojo is feared more than Sukuna himself was when he was alive in his golden age era, when he was a human. The Ryomen Sukuna of ancient Japan was called the benefactor of the Hida province and was worshipped by the people. The Nihon Shoki described Sukuna as an evil being, an enemy of the emperor, but the people of the Hida and Mino provinces worshipped him as a savior. Specifically, the people regarded him as a kaiki, a patron of a temple, aka a founder. According to the rumor, one of the temples that the mythological Sukuna founded is called the Senkoji Temple, located in Kyoto City. This would explain why the Sukuna in Jujutsu Kaisen has a domain expansion which summons a divine shrine and a temple. When looking at the original Japanese text of his domain expansion, it translates to demonic ferret and also somewhere a king would go to eat. Which surprisingly, Sukuna's number one hobby is eating according to the author. And his technique of dismantle and cleave is to butcher something. This is a very important clue to the nature of Sukuna's power. And I'll explain why at the end of this video. Now going back to the definition of the Japanese text of his domain expansion. A feratory is an ornate, often portable bear for the relics of a saint, or in other words, a shrine to keep relics for saints. So no matter how you translate it, both names correlate to a shrine used for evil spirits or curses. It is highly possible that Sukuna has an ability to store other powers like relics. The spirits that Sukuna had cut and scattered could be part of the arsenal of spirits he was taking abilities from, as we found out that Gege confirmed Sukuna likes to eat humans in Jujutsu Kaisen. In chapter 117, Akatami draws a chapter cover of Sukuna that adds more weight to the theory because we see Sukuna with ancient weapons with all four of his arms visible, just like the real Sukuna of Japanese legend. It is also no coincidence that this was also the chapter where we get an in-depth explanation of how Megami tames the Shikigami he summons. So using logic and and summarizing everything, this indicates to me that Sukuna has curses and techniques waiting on his return. Ureume is proof of this being introduced in chapter 53, being introduced after goodwill. Ureume has even had their hand in controlling curse users working with the curses. These events lead to chapters 116 and 117, where Ureume returns to Sukuna, who not only seems shocked at first, but also tells them it won't be much longer until I'm fully free, and don't neglect your preparations. These lines are important because Sukuna stops all conversation with Uruume to save Megami Fushigoro, but make sure to let them know that the plans are coming along. This makes it safe to assume Sukuna has certain curses under his command, and Megami's ability was not only a convenient ability for storing curses, but it could also connect to Sukuna's resurrection or rebirth. 
Especially since Gege Akatami confirmed in an interview that the one assumption that Satoru Gojo has made wrong about Sukuna was his goal to retrieve all his fingers. Meaning Sukuna has another plan to come back to life. Another amazing piece of lore from Sukuna's legend in real life is in regards to the Nihon Shoki and the Kojiki as it explains his odd appearance. There is a story about a pair of twins called Prince Osu and Prince Takoru that Sukuna is said to represent. According to the story, Takoru who was the younger brother was ordered by his father to teach Osu some manners when he began to act out. However, even the king feared Takoru's bad temperament and instead of simply teaching his brother, he killed his elder brother Prince Osu. This has led many Jujutsu Kaisen fans to theorize that Sukuna also had a twin or a brother that he either killed absorbed in the womb or even ate. We already know that having a twin is a major problem for the Jujutsu growth of both the siblings. I don't need to remind you how painfully Akatami drilled it into our minds through the story of Maki and Mai vs the Zenin clan. As Maki and Mai stated that twins are viewed as a single being in terms of curse energy, meaning that the murder of one twin would strengthen the remaining sibling. So if Sukuna also had a twin who was impeding his growth, it wouldn't be out of character for him to kill that someone since he believes in individualism and is incredibly selfish. This also explains why he got such great power, multiple arms and an unsettling desire for human flesh. After all, we know from the beginning that Sukuna used to eat humans which is totally a taboo especially for Jujutsu. Gege Akatami confirmed that Sukuna was feared as a king of curses before and even after his legend was created. Meaning that even as a human, Sukuna was seen as a king, but people were scared out of their minds from him according to the author. Just his mere presence. This gives us even more evidence to the taboo that Sukuna was doing. He was eating humans and garnered a scary reputation like a cursed spirit would. Remember, a cursed spirit is formed from negative emotions as well, such as the fear of volcanoes and more. This would explain why Sukuna became a walking calamity like Satoru Gojo when he was alive as a human. Akatami confirmed that Sukuna did not have a wife, children or family when he was alive, which leads one to believe that he butchered and ate multiple people to absorb their cursed energy and techniques. Moreover, we we know that Sukuna kept Ureume because she could cook humans really well and make them taste good. Now that was kind of gruesome and you probably weird it out and you probably view Sukuna kind of differently from what you did earlier and I apologize for that but let's move on because in the real life mythology it is also said that Sukuna introduced Buddhism to the Hida province. So basically characters like Ura Ume could be descendants of a clan of people from the Hida province hence their loyalty to Sukuna. Not only that the spirit Sukuna mentioned to Yuji Itadori that he had cut and scattered could easily be curses that lived under Sukuna's reign and were also from the Hida province. And once Sukuna went up against the best sorcerers of the golden age, he used these cursed spirits as protectors or holders of his fingers, scattering them throughout Japan to make sure his immortality will thrive. An example of this is in the death painting arc from chapter 55 titled Origin of Obedience. In this arc, we learn that the curse under the Yasuhashi bridge was awoken after Yuji Itadori ate the first finger in June, and it then started hunting people down and killing them. Megami concluded that the finger bearer curse are forming due to Sukuna's curse energy being awakened and is now resonating. So there could be even more curses out there responding to the awakening, especially since Yuji Itadori in the manga has eaten 10 more fingers, contributing to Sukuna's overall energy. So who knows what else could be awakened or already awoken. I'm scared guys, I'm scared. Oh, oh scary, 
Oh, 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 shiver my timbers. Shut up, man. But considering possible deities and mythical beings such as Yamato no Orochi has been mentioned by Sukuna in the actual story of Jujutsu Kaisen when he was facing General Maharaga, whom by the way Yamato no Orochi is a person from the Takauji Manjo, an ancient text that recorded the earliest Kami lineage, you can only wonder if Sukuna's kingdom of rule had some connection to heaven or in Jujutsu Kaisen series a place that transcends where all souls and curse energy resides. That would explain how Sukuna became a curse from a Jujutsu sorcerer reaching the heavens or enlightenment. Sukuna understood the true concept behind the curses and what true Jujutsu is. Sukuna is depicted in the Nihon Shoki as a bloodthirsty rebel who refused to kneel to the imperial seat and massacred hundreds upon thousands. He only stopped when the emperor dispatched Shogun Takefuro Kumo no Mikoto to deal with him. Sukuna was allegedly the name of a reigning figure or family in Hida, not a walking disaster. When the Yamato imperial family attacked and took over the land, they circulated propaganda stating Sukuna was an evil spectre that haunted Hida, further justifying their violent invasion using corrupt politics. Since the Nihon Shoki was edited by the Emperor's family, the Yamato family would have the motive and the power to portray Sukuna negatively. This is also why Sukuna was nicknamed Ryoman, which means two-face in Japanese, indicating both his literal two faces but also his opposing reputations. For example, all of this is linked to the recent chapters. The Fujiwara clan was mentioned in the fight against Yuta Okatsu. If you didn't know, the Fujiwara clan is a real family during the Heian period. And if that name rings a bell, that means you're on the right track. The Heian period is when Sukuna was the king of curses over 1000 years ago. Tengen is the advocate of Buddhism in Jujutsu Kaisen. His age of sorcery is from 1200 years ago. Even our main antagonist Kenjaku comes from the same time period, which means this clan existed during the time of the golden age of sorcery, whom Kenjaku is trying to revive in the modern world. This is very important because until now, we have only seen Gojo men the vengeful spirit Sugawara no Michizane from that period. And Fujiwara is a new name that seems to be connected to Kenjaku. So there is a connection between Fujiwara, Tengen and Sukuna. Moreover, according to the history, the Fujiwara and Sugawara families were in conflict. In fact, the Fujiwara family indirectly caused the death of Sugawara no Michizane. The Fujiwara accused the Sugawara of a royal conspiracy and then the ruler stripped Sugawara position and sent him out of exile where he died. So why did Takako ask if Yuta was a Fujiwara? There's quite an interesting story here. The Fujiwara dominated the Japanese politics of the Heian period through the monopoly of regent positions. The family's primary strategy to be in power was marrying the daughters to emperors. It sounds a lot like what the current Jujutsu society is in, with the big three clans wanting to have the most power by hook or crook, even some like killing their own blood. This is another reason why Satoru Gojo vs Sukuna's fight is inevitable because once again they share the two sides of the same coin. Sukuna wants to destroy everything and live out his desires and his story is literally connected to the corruption of the Jujutsu families even from a thousand years ago. They are the descendants of the families that torture Gojo in the present. In contrast, Gojo said he wants to make a reform and change the way of sorcery in terms of its reliance on the big families. Whereas Sukuna, he simply thinks it should be gone for good and doesn't give a f <laughs> Now, carrying on from what you mentioned there Adil, let's link this bad boy back to the ancient Monjo text that we have in real life. Sukuna had his own Hida based dynasty, the same size of the Yamato no Orochi dynasty, someone who is mentioned in the manga story whilst fighting General Mahuraga. This made the real life Sukuna a king and ruler in his own rights. Now is all this just one big spooky coincidence? No, 
More than likely, the King of Curses title for Sukuna is given to him in the story of Jujutsu Kaisen because of his real life counterpart and mythology of being an evil ruler of the Hida Provenance with an army of his own, where he also treated his subjects well if they worshipped him properly, but was harsh to those who would not. Just think back to Sukuna's interaction with Jogo and the twin sisters in chapter 112. The two sisters did not beg properly for only giving him one finger, which caused Caused him to kill them instantly. And he cut off the top of Jogo's head for not getting on his knees properly. And much like the Sukuna from mythology, JJK's Sukuna is always on the lookout for strength. He only deems people with strength able to talk or negotiate with him. His fight with Jogo was more of a deal where he asked him to lay a finger on him to get Sukuna on their side of cursed spirits. Whilst he earlier treated Jogo with extreme contempt and dislike, he rather rather enjoyed how Jogo fought with all of his strength and even asked him to stand tall. He then saved Megami because he has a strength that can be a weapon for his own selfish desires that we discussed earlier in this video. He thinks that Megami has great potential because he's a Shikigami user that can also fight close combat. Megami is using true Jujutsu in the eyes of Sukuna. This shows that instead of worship, Sukuna looks at the strength of people. So by now, you lot should understand that Ryomen Sukuna of actual Japanese mythology has a lot of lore that plays into his counterpart character in JJK. But beyond the Nihin Shoki, it is apparent that our Sukuna in Jujutsu Kaisen has also been given his title because of how powerful he is. Malevolent Shrine is a one of a kind domain expansion, as he has the ability to create it without even making a barrier to enclose it in. So instead, Sukuna has an extremely wide radius of 200 meters. This is important because it implies that Sukuna's understanding of cursed energy is beyond what we have seen even from Satoru freaking Gojo. Akutami literally called his domain a work of art and a masterpiece because he is able to realize it without the need of a barrier to keep it enclosed. I mean, it's pretty fitting for a king, right? After all, a king should be able to move anywhere on a chessboard. In chapter 118, Sukuna literally decimated 160 meters of Shibuya in seconds. Now that's a lot of damage! He killed numerous humans without a second thought and without much effort at all, leveling parts of the city leaving nothing behind but rubble and empty space. In chapter 117, we got the chapter cover of Sukuna in an older form holding two weapons in two of his arms. Clearly, this means that Sukuna is adept with cursed weapons and at one point in time most likely had them as his main items for fighting. Now, according to Nihin Shoki, Sukuna held swords on both sides and used a bow and arrows with his four hands. And since he made a sign of a bow and arrow with two hands to summon flames, does that mean that these swords as well as other bow and arrows signify more curse techniques? Jogo decides to go all out using his move Maximum Meteor, the first time we ever see this technique from him and Sukuna not only dodges it, but waits until the very last moment right before the meteor makes impact and then decides to move. Jogo for a second even says that even Sukuna must have suffered damage from that, but Sukuna just simply responds with if it hit while sitting there with his legs crossed. Again, this fight highlighted the level Sukuna is at. I mean, this dude was just playing around. Yet it doesn't even end there as Sukuna does the unthinkable. Sukuna uses Jogo's speciality and summons flames. Oh shit! specifically an arrow of fire. In other words, Sukuna took the essence of Jogo's technique and used it himself, but put a little bit of a spin on things. Sukuna says open with a black box in the text bubble, summons fire, and Jogo shows obvious confusion. Sukuna responds with, oh yeah, that's right. I thought you'd know about this, but I suppose a cursed spirit wouldn't. <laughs> What the hell does that mean? What does Sukuna know about cursed energy that cursed spirits 
Spirits wouldn't know since they are born from it. This interaction and the attacks Sukuna used points to him having multiple curse techniques. It would just add to how dangerous Sukuna is with his primary curse technique. Despite being shrouded in mystery, all hints point to the fact that Sukuna is insanely strong, which is why he is considered the king of curses. He is a cursed spirit currently due to his past as a Jujutsu sorcerer and splitting himself into 20 pieces. But because of this, he exhibits a power level beyond what curses have achieved after it. He has an understanding of cursed energy at its core beyond what we have seen from anyone else in Jujutsu Kaisen. But regardless of the specific nature of his physical capabilities, Suguna has shown the ability to look at pretty much any cursed technique and break it down within seconds without an explanation from anyone. I mean, for example, he could tell that Megumi's Shikigami were made from shadows at first glance. He understood Momiko's phone ability as well and didn't even see it used in action. And he understood exactly how General Mahoraga's adaptation and regeneration worked after seeing it just once, as well as having knowledge on the Blade of Execution, a sword embedded with positive energy. It is abundantly clear that Sukuna is not only stronger than the other characters in power, but knowledge as well. Being able to see the depth of others' abilities just like Gojo can, but without the need for the six eyes. From Sukuna's knowledge alone, we know that he achieved an understanding of this unique world better than anyone else, and for some reason, Sukuna sees humans as worthless as she in a herd. He shows strong hatred for humans and cursed spirits flocking together to achieve their goals because he believes solely in living for himself. Even when killing Jogo, he still spoke to him as a kind ruler in his last breath. He let him know not to doubt his strength and just how foolish it was for him to compare himself to humans instead of embracing himself completely as a curse. He is aware of the nature of humans and curses, but the only compassionate or kind side we have seen from Sukuna has only come from an interaction with curses, but that too only with someone who he thinks is strong. And when we talk about strong, Sukuna's first challenge went to Gojo of all people, the strongest sorcerer of the present time. There is no doubt that all of the fandom is waiting to see both Sukuna and Gojo at their maximum powers, and the more that we read Jujutsu Kaisen, the more we realise that it's only against each other that they can truly be at full potential. Now we've discussed this multiple times before, but there is another piece of info from the Nihin Shoki that indicates at this final showdown. Takifuru Kuma no Mikoto, the great general or shogun, was the designated killer for Ryomen Sukuna when he did not pledge allegiance to the ruling family. In this battle called Battle of Ryomen Sukuna, a lot of Takifuru Kuma's troops were slain, eventually turning into a great duel between Sukuna and and the Shogun. The general was impressed with Sukuna's superhuman ability and encouraged him to surrender and obey, but Sukuna stubbornly never listened, so he was forced to defeat him. This can indicate to us that the fact that there might come a time where Sukuna and Gojo fight to the point that despite Gojo asking Sukuna to give up, he will have to forcibly kill the body of his student, Yuji Itadori. This all links back to the sacrifice of Yuji, where he wants a good death for himself and to help as many people people as possible before leaving. If he can be a martyr to kill the King of Curses himself, he would do it as he already did so in the very first arc of the series when Sukuna pulled out his heart. After all, Gege Yakutami has already decided the ending of Itadori and mentioned how either everyone will die, meaning Gojo, Megumi and the others, or Yuji will die and the others will survive. Then make sure as hell that you go hollow purple on that like button and the bell to know when we upload next. But until then, bye bye.